Welcome everybody! In this video I'm going to show you how to do a swipe effect inside of a screen like this, whether it's a laptop, a phone screen, a tablet. You can do a slideshow of travel photos like this, or web pages, or really anything else you want. It's easier than you think. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to need is a blank screen. There's lots of places you can get photos out there. I'm going to use Pexels pexels.com, where you can get free stock photos, royalty-free. And if you just do a search for blank laptop screen, there's lots of different options here. You want one that's got a fairly straight-on view, like this one, or some of these others here. For the one that I'm using, the creator's name is Artem Padres. I don't know Artem, this is not sponsored at all, but I like some of his work. So if you're interested in the particular one that I'm using, it's this one right here. You can just click on it and then do your free download. I've already got that one downloaded locally, so let me switch back to PowerPoint. And then I'll just grab this picture and drag it over. Now I'm going to crop this one just so the screen is a little bit larger. I'll get rid of some of the space around the top and sides and the bottom. Just double-clicking on it, come up here to Crop. And then I'll just drag the handles down here around the image, but crop it, and then you might need to do that a few different times to get it to the right size to fill up the slide. All right, now the first thing we need to do is remove this white area of the screen. Basically need to subtract it from the image. So to do that, come up to Insert Shapes, choose a rectangle, and then draw the rectangle over the white area. This one is not perfectly straight on the edges, so you might need to go over just a little bit, but make sure you're covering up all that white area. Here we go. And then to subtract that, what you want to do is select the laptop picture, hold down the Shift key, and then select the rectangle. Make sure you do it in that order, or this next part won't work. Then come up to Shape Format, Merge Shapes, and then we want to subtract. So you'll see it basically subtracted that rectangle from the image. It's a little bit hard to tell. You can change the background color of the slide, so I'm just right-clicking Format Background, and I'll just make this a bright color so we can tell that the image is basically see-through now. So that's the background of the slide, and the portion of the screen has basically been deleted, which is what we want. All right, now we need some travel photos, or whatever screenshot or other pictures you want to use. I've got some travel photos here. I'm just going to start with one, the Milford Sound in, in New Zealand, and then I will resize this. We are going to want all of these to be the same height, this is not the exact dimensions of the screen. I'm not going to go through resizing all of them to fit the screen, but you can do that if you want to. I'll just center it on the slide. And then for height, this looks about right. If we come up here, 5.3, and then we'll just need to make sure that all of the other images are exactly the same height. But we want this to look like it's inside of the laptop, and so we need to bring the laptop picture to the front. I'll right-click on the laptop, bring to front, and there we go. Now it looks like the photo is inside of the laptop. I'm also going to get this designer pane out of the way and close out of this. Now let's work on that swipe effect. So I'll select the travel photo here, come up to Animations, and this is going to be an exit animation, so click on the arrow here to drop down and it will be a fly out animation. But rather than moving to the bottom of the slide, we want that to go to the left. So select the picture again, Effect Options to the left, and there's a preview. Let's make that slow down just a little bit. So for duration up here, rather than a half second, let's do one full second. And then we'll do another preview, clicking on the preview button here on the far left. That's better. 
All right, now I need to do the same thing for the other pictures. So next I will choose Uluru here in Australia. We will resize this one. Remember the height we went with was a 5.3 inches. There we go. And then align it on top of the other one. Now I could go manually apply the same animation that I did to the previous one, but the animation painter is your friend. So click on the original picture here and then come up to animations. Then over here, animation painter, click on that. And that will basically paint the animation from the first picture onto the second one when you click it. There we go. So I don't have to go manually apply that to all of the other pictures. All right, let's go do a few more pictures. I'll drag the next picture over. For size, we want to go with a 5.3 height. Align this on top of the other ones. And then we'll do the same thing. You can grab one of the other pictures come up to animations, click on animation painter, and then click on the third picture. And that'll get the same effect. And then I'll do the same thing for the other two pictures that I have left here. And I'll be right back. Okay, I've got five pictures now. I'm going to select all of them. I'll just use my mouse to drag over all of them here. And then come up to home arrange and we want to align center and then we can move all of them to the center of the slide again just using our guidelines there and now once again we need to bring the laptop to the front so it looks like the photos are inside so I'll just right click on the laptop bring to front I'm also going to hide some of these grid lines just to get rid of the distraction. So I'll right click over here off the slide, go to grid and guides, and we'll just get rid of some of these. There we go. Okay, let's play this in slideshow mode to see what we have so far down here on the very bottom. I'll click on this button for slideshow. And then if I click my mouse, all of these are set to start on click at the moment. I'm clicking, 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 and nothing happens until the last picture. So let's go fix that. So basically what's happened is the animations are applied in the reverse that they need to be. So if we come up to animations and then open up the animation pane here, we just need to reorder these. So picture 14 animation should actually go first. And then 12, I'm just clicking on these and dragging them up. And then picture 10, yours might have different numbers, but likely you'll just need to reorder entirely what you've got on yours. So now I've got picture 14 down to picture six. Let's run this in slideshow mode again. And now if I click through, there we go. Now they're in the correct order. All right, I'm also going to change the slide background back to black. So I'll just right click here, format background. And then rather than that orange color, let's go with black. Just so when the slideshow is over, we don't see that bright orange, but we'll see a black background instead. So if you wanted to stop here, I think this is just fine. But on a lot of picture carousels and Instagram and whatnot these days, you'll have an arrow over here on the right or maybe dots down here on the bottom to indicate that these pictures are part of a carousel or a slideshow. So let's just add on this extra bonus to make it a little bit more lifelike. To do that, we'll come up to insert icons and then search for arrow. There are quite a few things to choose from here. I'm going to go with this one right here, the arrow pointing to the right. Select that and say insert. By default, that's going to be a black color. I'm going to make that white. So if we come up here to graphics fill, you can go white. Or actually, let's just go with a light gray so it's not too contrasty. And then just drag it down here, place it wherever you think it makes sense. And now it's more clear that there's additional pictures if we click. But now what we need to do is hook up this arrow to the animations that already exist. And we can do that using triggers. 
So if I come back to the animation pane that I have open, if you had closed yours, just open it up through animations and then the animation pane. Rather than just starting this animation on click, which is what we're doing now, what we want to do is come in to Effect Options, and then on the Timing tab, expand Triggers down here. And rather than animate as part of a sequence, we want to actually start this animation when we click on something else. So on the click of, and this one's actually Graphic 16. Yours again might be something different, but for me this is the arrow. And then say OK. And so now if I test this one out, when I click on the arrow, that will trigger that first animation. So I need to do the same with the other animations. So I'll escape out of here, and then come back here and do the same thing. So just select your animation, come into Effect Options, Timing, Expand Triggers, and then start effect on the click of whatever your arrow is. Mine is Graphic 16, say OK. And then I'll do the same thing for these other three, and I'll be right back. OK, so now I've got the trigger set up with that arrow on all five of my animations. If I play now, and then click on the arrow, this should trigger all of the animations until the end of the slideshow. And there we go. So that's how to do a pretty cool swipe effect inside of a screen in PowerPoint. If you found that helpful, I would super appreciate you hitting that like button, and also consider subscribing for more content like this. Thanks so much for watching.